Welcome back, all you beautiful souls, to another episode of Aligned and Alive. I'm your host, Chrissy May, and today we are in studio with one of Arizona's most favorite human beings. Oh, stop. Come on. <laughs> That's too far. <laughs> She's a true hometown girl whose family's roots are deep-seated in the Valley of the Sun. She envisioned a career in journalism from the time she was a little girl. Since then, she has been passionately pursuing her dreams. A successful product of the Scottsdale Unified School District, including attending Chaparral High School. After graduating from Arizona State University's Walter Cronkite School of Broadcast Journalism, she went on to build her professional resume with her first TV job as a one-man band reporter in Joplin, Missouri, before moving to Springfield, Missouri, Beaumont, Texas, and Oklahoma City. In 2013, she returned home to be part of Arizona's family. The responsibility of her craft is one she does not take lightly. She gets in the trenches for the sake of credible storytelling. She's covered hurricanes, ice storms, blizzards, tornadoes, and even reported live from inside a massive monsoon dust storm for Arizona's family. That viral video is worth a Google, so go check it out. She is proud to have won several Emmy Awards with her Arizona's family team for their coverage of monsoon storms, protests in downtown Phoenix, and the WM Phoenix Open. During her six and a half years anchoring Good Morning Arizona weekends, she created her passion project, a weekly franchise dubbed Jamie's Local Love. This program shines the spotlight on Arizona's local business owners. She is greatly inspired by their perseverance, dedication, and true love for their work. Jamie's admiration of the entrepreneurial spirit stems from her own family. The Serettas have been hand-making candy at the Serretta Candy Company in Glendale for more than 50 years. She has worked evenings, weekends, and mornings at Arizona's family. She is honored to do the work she loves, in the city she loves, with the people she loves. When not behind the anchor desk, or traversing the town, uncovering the next hidden gem to highlight on Jamie's local love, you can find her checking out a new hotspot in town, supporting her sister and brother-in-law's Loot and Booty barbecue team, hanging with her incredible parents, or making waves at the nearest beach, preferably in San Diego or Rocky Point. Yeah, Puerto Nasco. <laughs> that was an emotional journey you took me on. <laughs> It's an oh, honor to sit and share oh, in conversation with the one me. and only Jamie Serretta. Oh, thank you, Chrissy. Oh my gosh, thank you for being here. Yeah. I feel so honored that you are, am I your first or second I've podcast? I've never been on a podcast before, so this I is, saved it for you. I, I've been asked by someone else, I'm putting them off. Oh I'm my like, God, Chrissy I love May it. gets the first one because I know I knew you'd be gentle with me. I, <laughs> I am always gentle with everybody. Well, I feel so honored. Yeah. But we also have a huge announcement because speaking of podcasts, mm -hmm. Somebody just has now their very own podcast. <laughs> I know. Well, Arizona's family came to me and said, it's time, Jamie. I've been kind of knocking on their door saying, should we do this? And so we just launched a podcast um, about a week ago. I had never done one in my, uh, my night before work. I dreamed of doing that intro time and time and time. I'd done it like eight times in my dream before I, I went to work that day and I nailed that intro just like you did right now. <laughs> I nailed that intro, but then I, I didn't know what to do next. So it was really interesting. So by the beginning of the week, I'd never done one podcast. By the end, I had four in the can. Oh so, my gosh. Um, you know, trying something new and God bless editing. <laughs> I say that all the time. And her podcast is called, of course, Jamie's Local Love, the podcast, which is available on all podcast platforms. So make sure to go download it today. I think that's amazing. And it's always fun to expand our next to the next level, right? And uh -huh. I think what was the biggest challenge for that? I think it's just, um, you know, I'll be celebrating 10 years at Arizona's family. I feel very... Um, at home there now, you know, I've been through, like you listed several different shifts. So, you know, a lot of, I know a lot of people, I know if I'm in an unusual com, uh, situation, I know who to turn to, I know who will help me and just to be doing something new. And it's me mm -hmm. doing that. You know, I, I don't, you have a co-anchor to help me. And I think that it, it's just interesting doing something new where you don't know what you don't know. 
right. again because um, I'm 24 years in the business and television now. So I think just reminding myself that I'm doing something new and don't be so hard on yourself, yes. you know, because I'd be like, why do I not, why did I not catch that? Why did I, um, you know, how did I not troubleshoot that? And I didn't know what I didn't know. So I think just that forgiveness and grace and, and just um, having fun with it. That's the key thing, having fun with it, because you're out there in the trenches, you're doing it, you're showing up, and you do learn as you go. That's the beauty of it. And it's fun, I think, to watch and look back and reflect on the growth process of it all, right? Like, remember when we first started and how shaky it was and the voice cracking and yes. I mean, all that fun stuff. So let's go back to the beginning. I mean, I like, obviously, I give a very detailed intro on all my guests, but I love to have the guests tell their story. And I understand that from a very early on when you were a little girl, you always wanted to be in broadcast journalism, but what was it? Was there an aha moment that stuck out to you that you can recall? Chrissy, I was a little girl who loved Radio Shack. The fact that we're sitting here in front of this microphone and equipment and cool cameras and stuff. I mean, I would try to get to Radio Shack any opportunity I could. I love that equipment. I love the microphone. Um, I had those funny little microphones back in the 70s or 80s, that plugged into your AM, FM radio, but I never had what to say. Like, I needed my uh, topic. I wasn't a huge ad libber. I wasn't uh, I needed a story to tell. And I always say, I literally would ask my parents, where's that spotlight coming from? Is that, you know, what, what is that spotlight in town? What is that, where's that fire truck going? So I think I was just always naturally nosy. And then as I got a little older, um, it was Channel One News with Lisa Ling. And we had that in our TV um, at school with part of our morning news. And I just love that she was out exploring. She was in Alaska. She was at all these places meeting the people. And I'm like, I want to do that. How do I do that? I thought I'd be good at it. And I thought I would be good at helping other people tell their story. Mm. Like I thought that I could provide some joy while informing people. And I felt very, very drawn to it, very passionate about it. And there was just... Um, there was no, no, <laughs> I was going to find, a, I was going to find a way. <laughs> Are you the only child? No, I've got a sister. I've got okay. a baby sister. Okay. Well, baby sister to me. So she's, um, what, 18 months younger. Okay. So she's a writer here in the Valley, Molly Soretta Smith. If you know Molly, Hi, shout out Molly. to Molly. She's the cutest. I think she might be cuter and nicer than me. Oh. So just if you meet her, <laughs> be kind to me. <laughs> But um, she's great. We have a very, very tight relationship. I'm going to see her today. Our work brings us together sometimes. Oh, so um, she's the writer and I'm the talker. And we always, we said it in like uh, high school, you know, middle age, what is it, middle grade? Mm -hmm. middle, middle school, middle school yeah. yes. That I would yell at my parents like in a fight and Molly would go hide in her room, write a dissertation and slip it under my parents' door at 3 a.m. So we both ended up like, that's how we like to communicate. She wanted to write and I wanted to speak. So did you guys ever create fun, like parody, you know, parodies or movies when you were kids growing up? Oh, we played a lot. Okay. Yeah, we played a lot and we um, had different, like, you know, I love to pretend I was rich and famous and I had a jet. <laughs> the jet hasn't come into my life yet, but <laughs> we're wait, always waiting on that jet, but, uh, you know, <laughs> we're definitely putting it out there. It's uh, my request to Santa every year. So, you know? <laughs> That's a great request. But shout out to my sis because she is, um, she is just the backbone of her family. She's got two Aww. great kids who are happy and going through the pandemic. They're entering high school this year. They're both in high school. So we expect my sister to go fully gray this year. <laughs> One of them is going to start driving. And, um, you know, they are her heart and soul. And she's um, doing a very successful role as a parent and raising bless, happy and well-adjusted kids. So. Bless her heart, because yep. that's mm -hmm. a heck of a role. I don't have children, but yeah. I watch my sister and what she goes through, and yeah. it's a heck of a role. Yeah, it's fun to watch, isn't it? It sure I is. I prefer that view. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go see them next weekend, and I'm going to have fun for a weekend and just give them back. How old are they? Uh, Logan is seven and Aww. chase is 12 that happens real fast they'll be teenagers and I, then, then they'll ignore you that's why it took me so long to think of their yeah. ages i'm like how are they really that old yeah. you gotta but enjoy I their attention now but i stay the same age we stay the yes, same yes age. We, we don't change <laughs> lucky us <laughs> that's the best part of yeah. it all so along your journey and i i have to backtrack here real quick yeah. because jamie and i actually met in person for the first time earlier this year we were on a panel for gcc mm -hmm. college with brett Kleiman. Mm -hmm. And it was so fun to hear her speak and tell her story. And there was a lot of moments that really stood out to me, which is why I wanted mm -hmm. to reach out to you because I was like, your story is pretty incredible. You've gone through a lot to get to where you're at. And I think that's true for most people who end up becoming, you know, 
stars in their own right, in their own respective fields. Mm-hmm. You know, you really had to sit mm-hmm. in those trenches and do the work and overcome mm-hmm. obstacles and challenges and setbacks and times where you could have thrown in the towel and said, no, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. But you kept just rising above every moment. Mm-hmm. So I love stories like that mm-hmm. because it's just, it gives the listeners, viewers, people out there going through the same process, the same struggles, mm-hmm. hope, right? And if we can give people hope and be that leadership, that vessel to show, hey, it's possible, don't don't quit. That to me is the biggest gift we can give to others along their journey. I um, I was thinking about that. I thought you might ask me that. Yeah. And I was thinking about um, how to properly tell how I got for me to be on that because I felt like I did um, spend a lot of time in hurt yeah. and not getting where I wanted to be as quickly as I wanted to be. And I stuck with it. I kept grinding and I was able to control my words enough because there are times mm-hmm. when you're in the workplace or you're out in public and you don't control your words properly. And I think that because I was able to control my words in those moments, I was able to do these things with grace. And then wow. when the opportunities came up, they said, Jamie's been in the trenches. She seems to have a decent attitude about it. She doesn't make a lot of waves or disturb her empl- her, her other colleagues seem to actually like when she's around. Let's pop her up into this role. She'll be just fine over there. So I was able to adapt to different roles because I was, um, I was controlling my emotion and viewed in the newsroom as um, emotionally mature. Wow. And it took time. It takes, t- it mm-hmm. takes time and it takes um, self-soothing mm-hmm. and comforting yourself and really thinking about, okay, I don't have to be here. So what should I do? Is there another place I'd like to go? Should I go get another job? Should I pack up my stuff and go back to Oklahoma City? They said they'd hire me again. Mm -hmm. Do I go back there? What Mm -hmm. do I do? And um, so I really dug my heels in. I remember a girlfriend saying, well, you're sent to weekends on this merger situation. I wasn't exactly pleased, but and, and, uh, of course, being a blessing, Jamie's local <laughs> love was, you know, you just got to leave time for that those things to happen and what you didn't want to become something you do. Yeah. Um, and to help create that, because that's when I said, well, if I'm going to do this shift, I want to do something I did in Oklahoma City, which was Jamie's local love. And then that became very, very... Um, well known in our community, which I'm mm-hmm. proud of, but also mm-hmm. very self like fulfilling for me mm. to meet these people, and then I get to bring photographers along who are like covering murders and fires and crime all day. <laughs> They're like, "What a fun day, Jamie! We got to eat cupcakes. We got to meet cool people. Like how inspiring that they start in their garage and now they're got three businesses. It's just really, um, really neat." But I think I stuck with it. I controlled my emotions publicly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never speak of what happened behind closed doors. <laughs> That's still a win. But yeah, and I think that those were two major things of just grinding it out and really knowing what I wanted. And um, I told myself I wasn't doing this for a business or a boss. I was doing this for me, my purpose, my God, mm-hmm. what I think I do and what I can do to make my little ripple in this world. And so I was c- committed to that. I even had someone in the newsroom come up to me and say, how are you doing this? I go, I don't do it for them. Mm-hmm. I do it for me and I do it for him. So that's where I'm rolling. And I was going to stay true to what I thought was my purpose. And so with staying in that, I was able to stay in a little more grace. You know, I'm not, this, this halo is a little cockeyed. You know, I, I ain't no angel, but I try real hard. <laughs> I try real hard. I think that's most people. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really amazing. So how did you... Where did that come from? Because not every young adult has the ability to control their emotions. We see that's the rarity, actually. So was it raising your family upbringing? Like, where did you even learn that? Well, my, my parents probably got the um, brunt of hearing screaming and yelling, yeah. kicking and screaming, upset, crying, whatever the vent needs to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think they always told me to look inside and not outside. The answer was not going to be outside. Mm-hmm. No person I met or, uh, you know, a uh, person in the newsroom was going to know exactly what's going on in my head and my purpose, but I was going to. Mm-hmm. So I just needed to find that time and spend that time and then decide where I wanted to direct my um, attention and move forward. Do you think that came from your parents owning their own business for so long that they've dealt with customer service and, and in that environment that they had to? I think my, well, my parents are interesting well. because my mom was the firstborn of several kids, young okay. young brothers. So she mm-hmm. was very much the leader of the family, mm-hmm. and as far as you know, helping her mom raise the kids. And then my dad was the top of like eight kids. So they're both the top end of families. My dad was drafted during the Vietnam 
era and was um, in the army. So I'm sure some of his leadership skills came from there and mm. just being um, having a harder, like tougher shell. He's a soft, he's a softy, but he can also navigate business mm. very uh, maturely and what's right for everybody. Let's find a solution that will benefit all parties. So I think that um, they always kind of instilled just a, a self-esteem, uh, working to become a better person yourself. Yeah. Um, and so I think a lot of a lot of those tools obviously came from my mom and dad. So I was very, very blessed in that way sure. that I was able to have those tools. And then, you know, I would very uh, willingly share those tools with friends who I thought, <laughs> you know, you know, I got lucky with the great parents. So I felt like if they're telling me something cool that's helping me, I, I got to tell my friends. So valuable. I mean, mm-hmm. all of that. That's yeah. great. Did they ever give you any pushback for not wanting to join in the family business? Oh, no. Okay. No, no. <laughs> they didn't. I was a kid in a candy store who wanted the microphone. They had a microphone in there <laughs> to, for paging, you know, oh, right. and I would be like eight years old and I'd run, run, in, run up to the mic, paging Jim Jr., paging Jim Jr. So that was where my broadcast career began. I think they just, they knew. That's great. They knew. They're oh, like, she needs to do her own thing. When you know, you know. Yeah. And it's it's so true. I was just as I discussed in the last episode of Carrie, it's you just follow your intuition, yeah. you follow your gut, mm-hmm. you just know where you fit in yeah. and you stick to that. And then of course having a great support system mm-hmm. along the way is so yeah. key, right? I Very mean much. it's still possible without that, it's just a little bit harder to find that circle and navigate yeah. it. I think I've um, had a much easier path because I knew uh, you know, they'd help me if something weird happened mm-hmm. and it gave me the opportunity to make some jumps and make some moves. So, you know, if I was pr- trying to support a family, I probably wouldn't make all those moves you listed. Yeah. So I think that, you know, obviously um, the family background and the family support is crucial. It is. It, it, it most certainly is. And yeah. the friendship circle, too, I feel, yes. too, mm-hmm. like we discussed yeah. as well. So then what was a, one of the most difficult obstacles you did overcome in your 10-year career that you can recall where you almost threw in the towel? Yeah but you still rose above. Um, So I think that 10 years here in Phoenix have been challenging. I've popped around to many different roles. And, um, you know, would I have liked for it to have been an easier route? Of course. And there was the moment where I was dating someone who was back in Oklahoma City and a merger had happened and I was being sent to weekends. And um, I thought, should I go back to Oklahoma? I can go back there. They already love me. Everything's already established. Everything's, I can get married to this guy and whatnot. And he said, I don't want to get married, and I don't want to move. Oh, okay. So I felt like <laughs> nicely dropped go. off in Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where I will roll. <laughs> so I just dug in on Phoenix. I'm uh-huh. like, this where I wanted to be. And that's what he said. He's like, Jamie, you wanted to be here. Yeah. You wanted to be here. You got here. So do it. And, and he was, you know, he would apparently after the breakup listen and say, you did a good job, whatever. So, um. <laughs> It's just the push you needed, though. Yeah, sure. You know, I mean, I <laughs> always felt like a baby bird pushed out of the nest. <laughs> you know, like, you ain't coming back here, girl. Yeah, I mean, I always think of those moments. Mm. We, you know, now we have wisdom behind us, yeah. right, being where we're at. And I, it's kind of funny sometimes when you think it's like the end of the world. Yeah. You know, your world's coming yes, down. Yes, yes. I'm never going to find the next opportunity or the next person. But then you do. I think I had a really tough time with that because of, um, I realize now how much, well, I put so much focus on my work. Mm -hmm. I put a lot of focus on the word anchor and Mm -hmm. being a Monday through Friday anchor, which is how I was able to do most of my career. So when it wasn't there, I was very tender and I was um, maybe even not good enough for me. My friends didn't care. I Mm -hmm. mean, a lot of my friends when I moved back didn't even know what I did. I mean, um, I was used to being in smaller towns where a lot more people watched very much the the television, the news, and they knew who we were or whatever. A lot of my friends here were like, I think she's on the news. I don't know, but she's Valerie's friend, so we like her. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take her. <laughs> so it's just kind of interesting where I was like, my friend's circle doesn't seem to care what specific role I have or anything about what I do. Should I? Maybe yeah. I need to pay a little more attention that I'm a good human. I'm a great sister. I love my parents. Mm-hmm. I'm somewhat uh, entertaining to be around. Maybe I have some wisdom from my weird life I've laid, <laughs> led. And so I just think that it's been, um, it was that, that was really a time to really see myself as a whole yeah. and not just one-sided and really appreciate some of those other things that I had been just not giving attention to. Right. No, that's a good reflection. Mm-hmm. It's a good process yeah. to go through. Many people don't even go there and, you know, mm-hmm. they just keep on going. So now that things are shifting for yeah. you in your current role, 
are you stepping down from Anchor and only focusing on now the podcast? And the, is it 3 p.m. news? So basically, now? what we are doing. So this is all very exciting and no yeah, one, this is news Chrissy breaking. Yes, news breaking and on the Alliance and Alive <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Chrissy May. and this just in: I don't step down from from anything. <laughs> <laughs> so no stepping down. So basically, what we're doing is, you know, TV is changing yeah. and people viewership is changing and. They want local news all the time. People are at home, and you think of GMAS. GMAS is on TV, Good Morning Arizona, from 4.30 a.m. until 10. And then we're going to um, elongate our live show, Your Life Arizona Now, from 10 to 11. So now we're on TV from 4.30 a.m. to 11. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to do a noon show from noon to 1. So now we're on 4.30 to 1. Well, you know, go grab a snack, come back, because then we're doing a new 3 p.m. newscast, which I'm super excited to launch. Mm. Um and we're going to be launching that on August 28th. So tune in to oh, Channel perfect 3. perfect timing having her on. This is like the perfect plug. I mean, you could stream as well <laughs> if you want, azfamily.com. And um, what we want to do is make this newscast look different than the other newscasts. We want to kind of peel back the curtain. We want to have walking scenes in the newsroom. We want... Um, I'm going to be hosting it or anchoring or whatever word you want to use. Mm -hmm. And then Derek Stahl, uh, one of our great anchor and reporters, he's going to be in the newsroom with our headlines and then also checking in on the assignment desk and finding out, you know, what's Sean got going? What's, you know, we just heard some scanner traffic. What are we, what calls are we making? Who, what uh, crews are we sending? What are we hearing? Mm -hmm. And just showing us, showing people how we get, um, we're calling it, um, journalism in progress. Oh, I like it. So it's almost like a reality show in a way. I mean, it's just happening kinda. live. It's happening live. It's what's happening live. I like so that. Um, you'll be able to see kind of how we do the news gathering process. And then we're going to do some like daily talkers. We're going to be hyper local, hyper um, topical. So whatever broke this morning at 8 a.m., we're going to be discussing it at 3 and we're going to um, also feature our podcast since Arizona's family has so many different podcasts from mm-hmm. your on your side to our political reporting to Brianna Whitney's incredible in uh, in-depth true crime Arizona reporting that she does. So we have a lot of great um, content that we want to share there. So the show starts um, at the end of the month. So lots of changes for someone who's used to either waking up in the middle of the night or coming home in the middle of the night. Um, I'm going to have a regular lifestyle ish. Whoa. What are you going to do with yourself? I don't know yet. I'm not sure. I have some ideas. Oh, hell yeah, I do. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get me in trouble. <laughs> I have some ideas. Nothing uh, bad, but yeah, I have some ideas. Yeah, so I'm um, very excited to just um, move into this next spot in my life and in my career. And I feel like it was perfectly curated to uh, do the things that I do well, mm-hmm. naturally, instead of trying to fit myself in a box yeah. that's you know, you do that for jobs. You fit your, okay, what are we doing today? Okay, I can do that role. But I feel like this role will be very much like, um, Jamie Surrett is here to stay. She's part of Arizona's family. So how do we let her do the stuff that we like to see her do? I feel like my bosses uh, were thinking that. I love that because it's, it's well due, right? Yeah, I mean, for you, all of us, we all everybody. You, and yeah. you put in the time, you put in the time and yeah. the grind. And mm-hmm. it's now it's nice to be able to show up. Mm-hmm. I always call it like you're now in alignment. Yeah, yes, you know, yes, yes. And that hence aligned <laughs> yeah, yeah. and alive. Yeah. I mean, really, it's yeah. you feel more alive when you are aligned, yeah. when you are operating from your true authentic space of what feels natural and good for you. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a misconception that you can't feel good most of the time we all have life happens right but it's a choice to feel good Mm -hmm. and when you're immersed in what you do naturally it just magnifies and amplifies and so now you're operating day to day from a totally different space and getting sleep and well i was gonna say (laughs) that must be like the biggest win for you right now i mean i just think that um (laughs) kudos to all of our people who do early morning shows and radio and whatnot and just even our truck drivers who drive overnight because sleep depression or sleep deprivation is such a huge thing. And I really realized what different health issues had kicked up because of it. And when I went into the, um, because I went from the weekend, uh, Good Morning Arizona, to the 9 p.m. Monday through Friday, I started getting my rest and all these health issues kind of just started going. Mm. And so I think, you know, I'm a I'm always telling people, get your sleep, go home, get your sleep. (laughs) Sleep is the most important thing. It really is. And I, that was, it leads me to my next question. I was going to ask you, do you integrate any wellness practices that help manage the stressors of working in your field? Mm. Uh, do you do any meditation, any hiking, any prayer, like whatever Mm. it is, do you carve out time to make sure Mm. that you nurture yourself? I think that, um, 
I spend a lot of time in thought, in purpose, and in, um, I honestly just like, I just want to like annoy my colleagues. How can I bring them joy today or annoy them? Like how, like, I just want to be, be a part of a happier moment of someone's day, mm. you know? So I think I just kind of try to, um, set the BS aside and take that moment and realign because I'm very, very lucky. I'm very, very blessed. And it's so easy to get bogged down by silly things that really don't matter. Mm -hmm. Um, so as far as wellness practices, I think I'm always reading. I'm always reading. Um, and when it's nice, I love to hike. Oh, I love Mm -hmm. to put, you know, some positive thing. I always loved like, um, I think I found a book in Joplin, Missouri. That was Norman Vincent Peale power positive thinking so I've always been a proponent of that I I, just to on a beautiful day to take a walk around my neighborhood I don't want nothing I mean work up a casual sweat but just a walk and enjoy the flowers Mm. I love Camelback Mountain I mean that that stuff is just to me getting a little sunshine natural sunshine so can't wait for the weather to break Uh, (laughs) you you and me both so yeah when is how come there's no monsoons this you know what's funny every time I watch the news it's like people get mad at the weather the meteorologists because it's like their fault that it's not raining yeah but here's the thing like (laughs) up north an hour and a half pace and flagstaff I mean they've all had rain I know so it's like here in the valley it's just been missing the valley um so I just don't know what's going to happen I think they said that August is going to be rough, so we know oh, that. Well, so I'm, let's just power through it. Everyone <laughs> power through it. Which is why I'm leaving next weekend oh, to go back home for oh. a little bit. Well, home, but where, where, where I'm from, to? Illinois, oh. where I'm originally from. Is it from. cooler there? It is. It's like 80 degrees. We're oh. going to go to the lake for oh. my nephew's birthdays and oh. just enjoy. Like you said, like just being outside yes. in the sunlight and yes. good weather there's nothing more nourishing. Yeah. I feel like it just recharges yeah. you and it just feels so great, so beautiful. So mm. that's really interesting. I was going to ask you, being in news from an outside perspective, looking in all news stations, it seems like it's very highly depressing to be mm. in an environment mm. like that day to day to day, mm. right? So have you had moments where it's taken a toll on you reporting crime and murders and all these horrible things that are going on Mm -hmm. and how have you been able to pivot from that in order to show up again and still serve the community well I focus on what you just said how can I serve the community and I know that I can do that like during the pandemic I mean a lot of people were able to stay home and I felt like I was this was go time let's go let's do this thing and um, it was my job to find those opportunities to show joy (laughs) <laughs> but also, I mean, I, for a very long time, I was a reporter who's knock, knock on those doors and would meet the mother who lost a child in something horrible yesterday and would quest an interview. And that's the worst feeling, but it's part of your job. And it's also part of the storytelling because there's an opportunity there to tell the story about your child. And maybe it's that a foundation finds that story and then things come from that. So you just don't know. And I'm always very, whatever they want. It is my job to ask you whatever you want. I realize I'm asking you something that's um, intrusive mm-hmm. on one of your worst days. So God bless you. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you want the opportunity, I'm here. Here's my card if you want it later. And then you just move on. Um, but I think that as far as just in the newsroom, yeah, we get heavy. We get heavy. Um, but we also have a tight group of friends Mm. there in the newsroom. We are very, you know, we're in the trenches together. You're not alone. And when you're out in the field, hopefully you have, uh, your buddy with you, your photographer. And, um, you know, those relationships are so important because you see things and it's 4.30 in the morning and you shouldn't even be up right now. (laughs) And you're like, what am I looking at? And uh, you're in it together. So I think just knowing that you have your team with you and that you have each other's back and that you can just have a funny laugh and like do a weird weather toss and just have some funny moment. And during the pandemic, I really looked for opportunities to just smile as big as I could because I knew that a lot of people didn't have an opportunity to see other people. Mm -hmm. And I might be the smile they see today. So I was like grinning (laughs) wherever was appropriate just because I knew that people might need it. And then I also think that um, I just try to digest what's happening, but not fully let it into my heart. Mm -hmm. So I have to guard it enough. I need to understand what's going on, but I'm not, you know, people say, oh, if that happened to me, I don't do that. I just don't do that. I don't do that. Yeah. 
It's like there's a yeah. filter in between. Well, yeah. So with that being said, do you ever feel, because I'm playing devil's advocate yeah. now, and I do, I love that you gave an example of how unfortunate circumstances can actually serve mm-hmm. a greater cause. For instance, a foundation being set up for somebody who lost, mm-hmm. unfortunately, a child yeah. or whoever. Do you feel, though, this is just my mm-hmm. my personal feeling, and I know many others, that the news tends to focus solely on the negative and sad stories because why does there have to be so much negativity when they have a choice to do what you do on Wednesdays, which is Jamie's local love. And I love that, no pun intended, I love that you do that. And it does serve as such a positive outlet Mm -hmm. to shine a light on community and uh, and a a better light. And so why do they choose to always focus on the negative as a whole, 95% of it, and only pump in 5% mm-hmm. positivity. So it, when you think of the history of a newscast, it was uh-huh. usually in the, an evening newscast, appointment television, 6 p.m. You had a, ha- had a half an hour. You had a half an hour to tell the day's news in the community mm-hmm. and maybe even the world news too. So you are trained to inform and protect, and that is what is most important. We have to inform you and we have to protect you. So if the danger's there, you need to know. You need to know about the wildfires that are coming up against your home. Mm -hmm. You gotta know about the accident that might, you might wanna go the other way so your kids don't have to see anything. And you have to know this information. Is it great? No. Mm -hmm. But we could be helping you, and that's where we, that's what we believe we are trying to do, is trying to help you better live your day and make those decisions on what you can do. so we want you to have the tools that we have the information for. Mm-hmm. And so you can make those choices for yourself and your family. And then in you, you know, the, once again, back to a half an hour newscast back in the day, then you had your weather and then you had your kicker story. And the kicker story is always, you know, something maybe the ducks fell in the grain, you know, the grain at the sewer or whatever. And you know, the firefighters rescued them. Anytime that story is on the feeds, I grab it. You know, everyone loves like the little duck story <laughs> and you end the show. Good night, you know. Right. But then you... Uh, see the evolution where our morning shows have grown in length. So like I said before, 4.30 to 10 is our morning show. So if you watch Good Morning Arizona, you get some news, Mm -hmm. but you get a whole lot of good. So I'm very proud of that. We have so many different platforms to find exactly what you want, where people say, I don't want the news, Jamie. Uh, It's such bad news. I know. Well, okay. Well, I guess what? There's a whole YouTube page of straight up Jamie's local loves. Mm -hmm. You can just search and find some inspirational stories. Mm -hmm. Or if you like true crime and you want to hear that stuff, we've got a whole page of that where Brianna Whitney is working so hard to put together these beautifully told stories that are important because people are still searching for killers. And that's important to find justice for these families. So I think you know, I just hit it. You did. No, that was perfect. (laughs) No, that was great. And it's well explained because it does show that there's more options available. Mm -hmm. If you choose to tune out the negative part that you don't want to maybe be a part of, Mm -hmm. because maybe you're just too sensitive to hearing that, that you can tune into a higher positive outlet. I mean, I always say, if you don't want to hear the headlines, tune in at like 6.07. You know what I mean? Let (laughs) them get past the the headlines. Let them get past the headlines. And then we'll have our reporter live at, you know, the new uh, pickle ball, the new pickle mall in town or something. You know, right. but it all serves a purpose. Right, right. I mean, it really does. Mm-hmm. Do you find out the bigger mainstream, like CNN, Fox, NBC, that they tend to? I mean, there's a big, uh, you know, a lot of people out there that are talking about fake news and mm-hmm. all of that. How much do you feel, and if you feel commenting, if not, that's fine, um, is credible on those platforms I think specifically? It's, um, I think it's very important to remember if there's someone's name attached to something, it's probably a show. Show many editorial, meaning this is, may not be a newscast. And we had two big names during the pandemic that were shows. Mm-hmm. So take that piece of information and use it as you will. Mm. We are your local newscasters. We are in your community. We are interviewing the doctor at Valley Wise. Yeah. You know, we are interviewing the people who are the, the mayor, the governor, the people that we elected. So we are choosing to interview our local leaders. So we're as right here in your community as you can get. Um, CNN and Fox and all of them, uh, we appreciate the information. And I think it's important that we all... Uh, filter accordingly and make our own decisions. Well said. We'll leave it at that. I like that. Uh, 
local love with uh, Jamie's local love brings so much positivity. And that's something that you've been involved now with eight years. Yeah. How, that's how mm-hmm. it's been. Yep. Mm-hmm. How did that transpire? How did that come mm-hmm. about? Was it just one day you're driving around and looking at a local hotspot saying, yeah. I want to spotlight mm-hmm. that. It sure is fun. It's so, it's so much fun. And I worked very hard to get it on air. I um, started it under Jamie's Favorite Things in Oklahoma City because I was a 9 p.m. anchor Monday through Friday. And I didn't get out of the house much. I was in the newsroom. And I missed getting out in the field. I, I said, how come I don't know the mayor? The mayor should know me. You know, I've been in this town seven years. The mayor doesn't know me. <laughs> I Wake gotta, up. I got to get out of here. <laughs> so I was, you know, I wanted to get out of the newsroom. Uh, and it reminded me that I got into this business because I love the people. And while the anchor role sure is fun and important, and there are a lot of responsibilities there, especially when wildfires break and you have no information and you're sent to the desk and go, go be live, do it. Okay. What's, what do we know? Nothing. Go. Okay. (laughs) Here I am. Hi. (laughs) It's me. (laughs) So, you know, that role is very important. Um, but I wanted to get out a little bit with that. And so it created this perfect role for me there um, because I always had a running list for when my parents visited town of all these little mom and pop shops that I wanted them to see in places where, you know, it's Joe's Pizza and Joe's there, you know, and it's like Mm -hmm. your friends are there. You walk in the door and uh, like here in town, um, it's Irma's and Irma's there, you know, and you just know the people. And and I just think that's so special, uh, those mom and pops. So I, when I went to Good Morning Arizona, I said, I think I should do this and I will do it once a week and it will be called this. And this is what the, I would like the logo to look like. And XOXO, thank you. And please, and thank you. And eight years later, <laughs> I, that is so perfect too, because mm-hmm. now it gave you an outlet to finally be able to show up without the, the crime, the grime and, yeah. and all that every mm-hmm. single day. And I do think it's very important to highlight the builders. Yes. I say, you know, these are the builders, mm-hmm. small town America, you know, Main Street, especially working in the small towns, you know, Main Street was the butcher, the, the merchantile. I mean, so mom and pop built America. And I think it's important that we remember who's going to write us the check for the soccer, the kids soccer team. You know, it may not be the corporate place. It might be, you know, the locally owned pizza joint or whatever it may be. Oh, so true too. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's, it's community is what's, what yeah. it's all, where it's all about. So what is your take on all the new, um, redevelopment going on in downtown Phoenix? You're, you're a native yeah. of Arizona. So I you've mean, seen I a lot. You kidding me? I love it. I know. And so much happened during the pandemic. I mean, so much growth. Yeah. And I really like watching some of these businesses grow. Cause I feel like there's, um, like a six year plan in some ways. Mm-hmm. So from in six years, they have immense growth. So it's really exciting. And I also think Phoenix is very, um, you know, I'm not a business owner. I just talk to business owners. But I I think that Phoenix is very collaborative. Mm. And I think that there's a lot of people who help each other, you know, bring each other up as they move and, and share information. And so Roosevelt Row, I mean, we never yeah. went. You did not go downtown when I was a kid. You did not. You know, it was something you needed to get some paperwork done at the courthouse and out of there. Mm-hmm. So it's really fun to have a walkable place. And um, I just love seeing people enjoy our city. Like when um, season comes and it's 8 a.m. and you see a bunch of people who arrived with their luggage. <laughs> I just want to yell, ah, enjoy my town. <laughs> like I do I get so excited you know it's so true yeah. it's such a great perspective yeah. because I see a lot of the opposite where it's, it's like getting so crowded now oh. and people are you know too many people are coming yeah. here but I, I think I don't it, want them to buy a house I still yeah. would like to buy a house just come visit spend well, some money <laughs> yeah on the real estate side my gosh and that's just the prices where they're yeah. at it's unbelievable but it is fun to see the growth it is yeah. fun I mean you you get it you understand yeah. why people want to come here yeah. it is the valley of the sun it's mm-hmm. An opportunity. I think there's a lot of opportunity here. I think that um, people really embrace and have, because of our climate, uh, unusual work schedules here. Mm. Um, It's always funny on a, you know, Thursday at noon. Does anyone work? (laughs) It feels like like a lot of people are out enjoying. So I think a lot of people have taken control of their schedules. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just think that it you can you can make it happen. If you're looking for something, I think that Phoenix will help you make it happen here. I like that you said that because it is Phoenix will help you make that happen. You don't get that in a lot of cities throughout the country. You know, I'm from the Midwest, as Mm -hmm. I've mentioned, and I left when I was 22 years old because I knew I needed to spread my wings and fly and get the heck out of there. I'm grateful for my upbringing in the Midwest. You know, it was a wonderful place to be raised, but I just felt it was so different too. Like there's something about being in the sun. Yeah. yeah, When you're in the sun, you're outside, it Mm -hmm. just feeds that 
it feeds positivity, energy yeah. into you and that positivity mm-hmm. where your your mood elevates. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've done studies on this, yep. as we all know. Mm-hmm. And so when you made that statement, it really is like not just Phoenix, the people, the community, mm-hmm. but the environment mm-hmm. has a way of really lifting you up yeah. and helping you just feel that energy that you need to step up and succeed. I mean, even if it's hot, you yeah. can look at the window, keep it cool in the house yeah. <laughs> and look at the window. And it is, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh no, I love it. Um, okay. So the future of the news, ah. the future of the news. <sighs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 I mean, dun. it's ever evolving. That's a thing. And we, we can't be sticklers. You can't, um, be the dinosaur in the newsroom. You gotta be able to bob and weave, and I think that's why I've, I've been able to stay in Phoenix so long and stay on television. Is that I bobbed and weaved? I, mm-hmm. you know, where are we going now? Where are we throwing the ball? All right, let's go and not fight it. You know, I think that um, people obviously. I spend a lot of time on my phone. We always laugh. My uh, former co-anchor Kylie Cruz would be like, "What are your hours?" You know how <laughs> Apple will let you know. She's, oh, like, yeah. she's like, "How much you're on your iPhone? Eight hours?" I'm like, "I'm getting content. I'm this is story research, you know." <laughs> but you spend a lot of time on your phone. So yeah. how do we get on your phone? We want to be on your phone. We want to be where you want to find us. And um, we also want to. I think moving forward, I know that a lot of the kids are watching YouTube, and they want to find the news stories they want to find. Like you mentioned, mm-hmm. you maybe don't want to hear every car crash in the neighborhood, but you want to find the um, immigration issue or the school funding issue or whatnot. So we are creating opportunities where you can search that story and find that story and read everything on we have on that story mm-hmm. so that it's, um, what do they call it? Oh, they call it searchable and shareable content. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sure. we want things that, that you can find and then you can send your friends and it's um, kind of cherry picked for you. Hmm, I like that. It's like the one-stop shop. Yeah, it yeah, really we'll is. Get anything you want. I mean, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're out there. We're working hard, Chrissy. <laughs> we're, we're trying to get what you what, what we think will uh, protect, inform, empower, entertain. I mean, it's with good intentions, yes. and I think that people forget that like we are literally your neighbors, yeah. and that we that people think it's glamorous. It's not glamorous. It's not glamorous work. There's not hair and makeup. There's not clothing. I mean, when you when you Hey, send me that email that you hate my outfit. I chose that this morning. You know, <laughs> I probably spent a couple bucks on it. You know, <laughs> I was like, well, I can't wear that again. And so it's just, it's not a glamour as, as people, it used to be and what people think. So we, we want to give you good content that benefits your life. And that's really our goal. So it's not like Anchorman. It is not. <laughs> Except for that squirrel. In the squirrel story, I can't give up because you know how they have oh, the sure. water skiing. Okay, yeah, so yeah. the water skiing squirrel is a thing. And I was down in Beaumont, Texas, and he was supposed to be on my morning show, but apparently did not wake up for the alarm clock <laughs> and then showed up on the competition at 4 p.m., which I'm still bitter about. I have to learn how to align and alive and get rid of that. <laughs> that I'm still mad at that squirrel. <laughs> Took me up. Hey, That's squirrel. So I've got a 3 p.m. show. I'll see you there. <laughs> It's afternoon. I mean, it's it's such a classic movie uh, too. It but, is. but there's no hair and makeup or anything. Now, no. is there is there competition like that though? Um, I found I found Phoenix to be extremely friendly. Okay. Like, do we want to win? Yes. Yeah. But am I gonna? Um, I see that you're sweating and we're having a tough time. I'm gonna make sure that if I have an extra cord or I've got a, I've oh, got a yeah. fan, you're gonna have it. Yeah. So I think that um, especially the early mornings. I mean, the other stations kind of became your colleagues because we were out there together in unsafe situations. Mm -hmm. So we really watched each other's backs and were, um, you know, used the uh, buddy system. Yeah. And so you became a team, you know, just to protect each other. Super important. How big is Arizona's family team? Oh, gosh, that's a good question. I mean, are we talking like 50 or? (sighs) Probably. I think we're probably leading. Between everybody. Yeah, probably 50 in the newsroom, I'd say. And do you guys all get together and do, like, well, family I, picnics yeah, and stuff I like wish. that? Or? Um, <laughs> no, we do not do family picnics. But I can tell you, since I've straddled both, you know, morning and mm-hmm. evening, because the morning crew has been here and together for, like, 15 years. Wow. And that's, like, the, the minimum. So, uh, you know, you think of April and Tess and Scott Passmore, who's, like, 
got oh, 30 yeah. years Scott's at Arizona's correct. family. Yeah. So, you know, they truly, they've raised their children mm-hmm. together. They have, they have lived life together. They have yeah. been each other's weddings. They have been on their baby showers. And so that's there. And then Nightside, you know what? Nightside likes a karaoke. So we do pizza parties at work. So we have payday pizza. Uh, so payday, <laughs> payday, payday Fridays, we do pizza. And, um, and karaoke? And so we'll who, do karaoke. Who's the rock star of the group? Um, Hunter. Hunter is one of our editors. Oh, really? <laughs> Hi, Hunter. Now he has to listen. <laughs> he has to listen to this one. So, yeah. So, Hunter is our, like... Oh, I didn't know you had that in you. Wow. And it belts out like some heavy metal. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Well, you never know about your colleagues until you go to karaoke. I think karaoke is a great tell. Oh, sure. <laughs> you know, like I'm singing some bebop song. <laughs> <laughs> karaoke pizza huh? and maybe a few beers. What and there you sing? Chrissy. I can't sing. Well, karaoke, you're not going to sing? Oh, no, no, no. I still will sing. So what do you sing? What's your song? Anything country. Oh, country so girl. So any, I'm a country girl. Oh, strawberry wine. Oh, of course. <laughs> a little Lainey Wilson. Uh, Is it Lainey Wilson? That's oh, she, well, she's the new up and comer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met her like you right did. before she got big. <sighs> and she was adorable. I'll tell you what. I thought she was my, um, it was over at that Wickenburg, the Lazy E or something. Okay. Uh-huh. So the, there's a cool little mini country thunder they do in Wickenburg. Okay. And it's a very cool family owned ranch. And Lainey Wilson was going to be mm-hmm. there. And she, it was early morning, you know, it was my 9 a.m. segment. And I go to meet her and she's in the pool. She's got her hair up. She's got a hat on. She's got glasses and her buddy with her. And I'm like, oh, God, I'm, I need you on TV in 10 minutes, lady. <laughs> <laughs> she was there in 10 minutes. Wow. Happy as a metal lark. Hair down, glasses on. She was ready to go. I'm like, you're, you're going to be a star. You got you got it. So, oh, yeah. So I'm very proud that I, you know, got to witness this moment from her. But That's a she's huge got one. It. Yeah. Oh, she has it, and she just seems so authentic yeah. and real, she which I adorable. love. Yeah, country is my go-to yeah. always for any karaoke. Yeah. And put okay. on some country, cowboy boots. and See, yeah. but you have to really be able to sing to do country. Well, I feel like you don't. So this oh. is my perspective on it. <laughs> So, okay, because so we're going to karaoke and all my you free ha- time with my new job. <laughs> we'll do it in the future for sure. We'll grab Carrie, we'll all go to okay. karaoke. But I feel like if you're twangy, yeah. you can, if you miss a note, oh. it doesn't feel like you miss a note because okay. you can just twang it, yeah. you know? Okay. And, and then you look like you're still a country yeah. singer. Oh, but any, anything else, like, you know, if you're singing, singing it like Christina Aguilera style, oh, gosh, or yeah. I, no, like you have to be a professional oh, with right. that. But yeah, yeah, good old karaoke. I yeah. love it. Well, like we do with everybody oh, here, mm-hmm. we have a speed round. All right. Dun, 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 well, dun. Bob, you're taking a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, it's like oh, a build no, up, What happens you know? now? Like, <laughs> I named this round Getting Jazzy with Jamie. Oh, hmm. You know, I have to like think of play on okay. words, right? right? Getting Jazzy with Jamie. Right. And when I looked at the word jazzy, do you um, know it actually means colorful and bright? Oh, I like which it. Which you are. Oh, thank you. So I thought Very that was kind. perfect. All right, so, oh, it's also associated with, it, with intelligence and grace. Oh, you don't say. I wrote I'm that gonna, down right I'm going to need those notes. <laughs> Sign that. I'm hanging it, it putting that in my office. <laughs> All right, so there are 10 questions. Right. It's just a speed round. All right. Quick Jay- answers. Quick answers. Okay. One of them or two of them are going to have to be a little bit longer, but Jamie has no idea what I've written here. No, so. I don't. All right, here we go. All right. Name your top three restaurants in Arizona. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, Durant's. I love Durant's. Um, Lawn's. Oh, and Cava, to make it weird, because I just look, found them. They're not locally owned. I need to hold on. I need another. Irma's Kitchen. Ooh, those were all good. But Cava, where's that at? The Cava is a chain. It's like a Chipotle. It's Mediterranean. It's oh, delicious. Okay, I'll have to but check it out. it's not locally owned. All right. What is your go-to place for a staycation in Arizona? Oh, so many. There's so many good ones. You want to give me a vibe? Give me a vibe. A vibe? I mean... The Scott. There you go. The Scott's My sister a good got one. The there. Scott's a great yeah. one, yeah. Where is the next place you would love to travel to? Oh, gosh. I always love a beach. I mean, I've been itching for some Rocky Point. I haven't been since January. <laughs> Arizona's beach. I keep it local, Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> when you don't keep it local, where would yeah. you go? Um... I, I recently went to Miami, and I like I like Miami Beach. Perfect. Yeah. Miami's mm-hmm. great. That's a good one. Your most embarrassing moment as a news anchor. Oh, gosh, so many. Um, one was when I just, I was in Beaumont, Texas, and I got my big-time job at, in Oklahoma City. So I was the I don't know, morning show girl, and then I was going to do the evenings in Oklahoma. It was a big market jump, and, and I'd done all the shows that day. It was a holiday. I'd written, and so I'd produced and did a ton of the shows. It's the day that Steve Irwin died. Steve oh, Irwin, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And um, so it's like the, one of the last shows. And 
I was saying, reading his story about his death, and I said, Habba, 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 Habitat, 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 da, da, da. And then the weather guy peeks his head out. <laughs> really, Jamie? How'd that go? Like, it's like six show of the day. Oh, no, it's on into space now. So just stuff like that. It's just silly, and it's gone and <laughs> over with. It makes for a good day, though. It's I mean, funny, right? You yeah, I think to... he called me Porky Pig. Habba, 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 Habitat. <laughs> That's not too terrible, I don't and think. And rest in peace, Steve Irwin. Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah. Wow, it's, you know, that was a long time ago. It was. I Both can't believe that. Long. Wow. Mm-hmm. Name one thing you would have done differently in your career. Mm-hmm. Um, I always think about the job that I interviewed for in Long Island, News 12 Long Island, just because I never went past, like, it was almost like there was a line. I was in Oklahoma, I was in Missouri and Texas, but I never went far east and that was an opportunity to maybe get close to New York City so I just think "Mm," but at the time it didn't feel right it felt totally wrong and I was on the interview being uninterested so I think you just have to listen to your heart Mm -hmm. but I think gosh would that have changed so many things would I have been like living in Manhattan right now but then I look out my window and see Camelback Mountain and drive my little convertible that I've had for 15 years and I'm happy here and nobody would be able to experience Jamie's local love. I mean, really. And now the podcast <laughs> that's going to be thank taking you. you to new heights. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it all worked out the way you. it's supposed I to. I hope so. This is a weird question, but I don't know what made me think of this. Oh, gosh. What intrigues you more, space or deep sea exploration? Oh, space. And for sure. Why? I love space. Okay. So even as a kid, I love space. I always thought, oh, uh, you know, when you think, what other jobs would I do? I thought, oh, maybe I could do some kind of PR. Where do they have in-house at NASA? Do they have an in-house, uh, you know, TV? I'm sure they do. They've <laughs> got to have some in-house stuff at NASA. So I always love what's going on in space. I think it's intriguing. Um, if anything, uh, one of our there's like a sky viewfinder type mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing one of my photographers and I like to do in the early mornings is check out the sky, see the constellations. So space for sure. No deep sea. I don't want to see what's down there. Too weird. <laughs> we don't know yet, right? <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> I'd rather the aliens than the sea monsters. <laughs> exactly. Name three things you can't leave home without. Water, my iPhone, uh, and my sunglasses. I, lo- <laughs> I love my key sunglasses. You're the first woman to not say lip gloss. Oh, really? Oh, I am a little dry. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has a book in them. Um, Have you considered writing one? If mm-hmm. so, what would the title be? Um, I considered writing one called The Boys from Oklahoma because it's a cross-Canadian ragweed title. And, um, you know, I've, I've dated a lot of people. And the, the beauty in my story is that I got to experience so many different type of people, whether they're, you know, the towboat captain, the country guy, the, uh, you know, scientist guy. I've, I've dated all types of people, not just from Oklahoma, but just... Just I've had a lot of experiences. So I think, you know, I think um, a dating book maybe. Or a workbook. Who knows? I love the title. (laughs) And we could always use more dating books. Oh, yeah. So (laughs) I'm going to hold you to that one. Mm. All right. See, that's a perfect spot for you to be on the panel next month. Is it about dating? What is it about? It's a lot about relationships, Uh, manifesting. So we might be adding a fifth. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it if, might be booked that day <laughs> i kind of got the hint say it without saying it <laughs> we'll check my schedule if you weren't a news anchor mm-hmm. what do you think you'd be doing right now um i think i'd be a business owner i mean i do i think mm-hmm. i'd be a business owner that's when in in play you asked me about like my sister in play um i think i had a business so i think you know at some point i'll probably have some kind of business i like it and the last one mm-hmm. You have a chance to rewrite your story. Ooh. Would you? Why or why not? Hmm. I mean, I, I, it'd be nice to be rich because they say it solves problems and would get me that jet. But I think I'm so happy right now and feel like I'm just with the people I want to be with, like the intro. <laughs> you were, I mean, I'm literally living the dream that I wanted for myself. I worked hard to be here, and I'm just so happy to be here and provide a service and, and that people find valuable. And um, so I guess it's a no, but could we add that billion, in, you know, with that billion so jackpot to So we're going to keep fun? where you're at saying yeah. a no. However, we're going to put it out there and manifest uh, Jamie's jet coming in oh, for thank her. You. <laughs> Hey, it could also come in the form of a new man you're going to meet, and well, he could have a jet. I and, would like to have the jet. Well, I you can still have the, the jet. Yeah, but you can still. 
Maybe one time. It could be a girlfriend with a jet that you um, that takes you along. That, yeah, she's bored without me. She needs me to, to go along with her. Okay, how about this one? <laughs> you could just manifest your own jet. Okay. We'll, we'll just keep yeah. it at that. I mean, we'll keep it it'd simple. Be nice. Okay. So, do you know what's funny about that? So, I on my screensaver of my laptop yes. for the past four years now mm-hmm. is a private jet interior. Uh, I'm obsessed see? with jets. Obsessed Why? with it. So you know, you know Volantes over at Scottsdale yeah, 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 Park. Yeah. There's, an, I don't know what it is, but every time I go up there, I had um, recently had a, a birthday lunch there, and not too long ago, something about the smell of the jet mm. fuel, the vibration of the jet engines, I can feel it. Got you and going. It, it gets me going. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so you like silly it. and cliche. Jet but engines, girl, it's, it's a, a thing. <laughs> but there's something exciting about Powerful. it. And to know yeah. that in a blink, you can hop on and go anywhere yeah. in the entire world. Because mm-hmm. travel is my number one yeah. thing. I but love travel. But now we got to think about the environment. People would be mad at us running around in these jets. Maybe I we know, need to do one of those start. Maybe just a membership to one of those clubs so that they can own the jet, take care of the jet, make sure there's champagne on the jet for us. So I, I do like yeah. the idea of chartering, chartering yes, more yes, now yes, because yes. you can just go whenever you yeah. want and they take care of all the maintenance. Mm-hmm. So I'm leaning more towards Not that. responsibility. Yeah. It's kind of like ease of it's it. kind of like having kids. <laughs> adjacent. adjacent. I enjoy my life, kid adjacent. <laughs> well, thank you so thank much you for, for being me. here. It's always it's been so great to connect with you. Yeah. You're just mm-hmm. you really are just like a shining light. Thank you. There's some there if you ever get a chance to connect with Jamie in person, mm-hmm. there's just something very magnetic about mm-hmm. her energy. It mm-hmm. really is. And it's I felt it when I first met you at oh, the, the guest panel speaking you know earlier this year and you're just a bright light, and we appreciate your everything that you do for the community. Thank you, Kristen. And I can't wait to see now the podcast oh, grow. Oh, my gosh. Okay, we need to give the details on that. So oh, yes. real quick, you can follow Jamie on Instagram at mm-hmm. Serena News. Obviously, catch her at Arizona's Family on 3TV, mm-hmm. which now is going to be 3 p.m. 3 p.m., August okay. 28th. Mm-hmm. 3 p.m., August 28th. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. <laughs> Ooh, that gives her some time to I do know. other stuff. Yeah. And don't miss, of course, Jamie's Local Love, which airs Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, now Jamie's Local Love, the podcast, mm-hmm. which is available on all podcast platforms. Mm-hmm. So don't miss it. Go and follow and give mm-hmm. her a listen. <sighs> Thank you, Chrissy. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. I appreciate you so much.